Hello, bonjour, and welcome to your Bonner Private Wines video. I'm your host, Julien, and today we're going to be looking at an essential part, a bit of an initial part to understanding wines, in fact, a point many wine experts forget to mention or explain, and they essentially overlook it, as it may seem so obvious, but it's very crucial, very, very important, the three main colors of wine. We look at why they matter to the core of your tasting experience and your appreciation of wine when you select a bottle of wine to pair with food and of course when you get to taste it. I'll try to highlight those insider facts winemakers know while most drinkers, perhaps like yourself, don't because they've never been explained properly. White wines are made of, yes, white grapes. Yes, this may seem obvious, while red wines and rosé wines are made of red grapes. The main difference is that red grapes contain natural red to purple pigments in their skins that are called anthocyanins. But we'll get back to those in a minute when I talk more about the red wines. But beyond the color of the wines, that is very obvious to observe, what is less obvious is that red and white wines are made in at least from a winemaking standpoint, completely different ways. White wines are fermented in a completely liquid form. The white grapes are pressed and separated from their skins just after harvest to obtain a rather clear juice that is then fermented. Generally, they add a little bit of yeast like you would for making bread, brioche or pizza dough. On the other hand, red wines are fermented together with the skins of the grapes to extract the deep color that we expect from red wines, which also extracts the tannins from the skins and from the seeds. You know those harsh and sometimes bitter molecules that you feel when you bite into a grape seed? Well, those are the tannins. So the difference in color between red and white is almost an afterthought. The color itself is not all that matters. The big difference between red and white is the presence of tannins or obviously their absence. Two of the main characteristics of white wines are related to the fact that white grapes are generally harvested earlier in the season than the red grapes. When you work at a winery, if you're harvesting the grapes as a picker, for example, or if you're making the wine because you're the winemaker just like I was, you generally pick the white grapes first and then process them at the winery, and that's around the end of August or maybe early September, and then you'll deal with the red grapes generally quite a fair bit after and that's from mid-September to early October. This is the standard harvest season schedule for a winery at least in the northern hemisphere. The result of this earlier harvest is that white grapes have less sugar in them and more acidity because they are simply less ripe when you harvest them than the red grapes. So white wines are lighter in alcohol and they are more acidic. It's important to consider when you pick a bottle of wine. So also how does all of this matter? Well, some people do not like the drying sensation given by tannins in red wine. That's one. Number two, tannins are very strong antioxidants. Hence, red wines often being attributed stronger health benefits to your heart and other health benefits than the white wines. Number three, white wines are more acidic, which some people prefer, some people dislike it. White wines also generally have more subtle flavors, subtle, subtler aromas. They are more floral, often with delicate white wine flavors like apples, the peach, the pears, the lychee, if we're talking exotic fruits, as opposed to red berry flavors for the reds and the roses. It's also very importantly going to influence the wine's food pairing abilities. Tannins pair very well with rich fat dishes that help smoothening the drying sensation that red wines give on the palate, while tannins go horribly bad with anything that contains iodine, so seafood dishes, especially the fresh raw seafood ones that are virtually impossible to pair with rich tanning reds. Red wines are more powerful too in terms of flavors, withstanding the matching with strongly flavored dishes, 
better. On the other hand, white wines and rosés, but we'll talk about rosés a bit later, are more discreet and elegant, requiring a more careful tasting to appreciate the nuances. Some may argue that it takes a little more sophistication or at least a little more concentration to appreciate white wines than reds. This is why you see white wines favored before or early during a meal for the lower alcohol and more subtle impact on your palate, on your taste buds, while reds come later with the mains and the cheeses. Just a word on those red pigments that give its color to red wine. As I promised, I would give you an explanation of the anthocyanins. Well, essentially in wine, those are of a similar type to those that give their color to most red fruits. The red berries, the plum, the also red vegetables, the eggplants, the beetroot, and the red cabbage. Those are pretty much the same pigment. Now, because of these tannins that we were talking about earlier, many consider red wines deliver the real wine experience because they taste very very different pretty much from any other beverage, which is a little bit less the case with the other colors. The only other beverages and foods that contain such an amount of tannins, that is, have such an astringency on your palate, such an impact, are coffee, tea, and cocoa beans. I must also mention here that red wines are the kings of age worthiness when it comes to food and beverages. They can age for decades and decades incredibly right and that's because they contain a lot of antioxidants that are the tannins so very old wines are generally reds being able to withstand aging for long and long in your cellar and i think this is also part of the uniqueness of the wine experience being able to experience products a beverage that comes from so far ago in time also if there's one thing i would like you to take away from this video is the concept of vinosity so vinosity is the word that defines the unique taste aroma and flavor of wine as opposed to any other food or beverage product we all know there is something really intangible that makes wine taste and feel and smell different. When you taste or smell a wine, you generally know it's wine and nothing else, right? And it's actually a little hard to point out at exactly, precisely, specifically what it is that makes this. And that's because Vinosity is a combination of various flavors that come together in wine to make it taste like it does and like nothing else. There is an element like vinegary character to wine because all wine tastes just a little bit hopefully like vinegar and that's because essentially a wine is a grape juice that failed to become vinegar which is the natural fate of a grape juice or a wine. There is also in wine an element of yeastiness because it's fermented by yeast, there is the acidity and there is the tannin. So all of this to say that red wines are more venous, this is the adjective for vinosity, they have more vinosity to them than white wines and rosé. They clearly taste more like wine and that's mainly because they are fermented together with the skins of the grapes as I was explaining earlier rounding up the circle. This is also why new and young wine drinkers when they come and first experience wine, well they favor white wines and rosés as their first taste of wine. In fact, liking vinosity is an acquired taste. And finally, let's have a quick look at rosé wine. Rosés are generally made using red grapes, just like red wines, but rather than being fermented together with the skins, well, they are pressed before fermentation to obtain a liquid, just like you would do with a white wine. So rosés are essentially more, much more like white wines, aromatically and flavor-wise. They are just white wines with tiny bits of red pigments, which makes them look pink. This means flavor-wise, rosés are much more like white wines too. They are a little bit more subtle, they are less alcoholic and more acidic as well. Perhaps they'll have a little bit more of red berry flavors to them as opposed to white fruit, the peaches and the pears that you find in the white wine. The final distinction I'll make as well is that while some white wines are made to be aged and will better with time, like some Chardonnays in Burgundy or in Napa Valley and elsewhere, most roses aren't meant to be aged or seller for a very long time at all and they'll have to be 
uh, enjoyed within the two years, two, three years maximum after the production. And I'll leave it here for today. I hope this video was useful and I'll be looking forward to continuing exploring and learning more about the wonderful world of wine with you. I will see you soon with our next video and this is going to be next week. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you soon in the wonderful world of wine. Au revoir. Bye bye.